I listen to girls for a living. I listen to their thoughts and feelings, the things that they love about their lives, the things they wish they could change, um, the things that make them angry, the things that they feel are un unjust. Inviting girls to be experts on their own experience is actually a relatively new activity. When my colleagues and I um, started our research in the 1980s, um, taking girls seriously was a bit actually of a radical act. Um, but we listened to girls, and we heard a disturbing developmental pattern. We heard um, lively and outspoken and embodied eight, nine, and ten-year-old girls come up against the pressure at early adolescence to be a certain kind of girl, a girl who was less likely to interrupt the social order, the surface flow of events with her questions and her comments, a girl who was felt the pressure to adopt a public story of girlhood that ironically would ensure that her voice was not heard or taken seriously. So in the early 1990s, we got kind of excited when the riot girls hit the scene. <laughs> um, this was a movement of young women, girls and young women, under the slogan, Revolution Girl Style Now, who were redefining what it meant to be a girl. Um, and reclaiming girl as a power word. Um, unfortunately, um, <laughs> um, uh, very quickly, the media uh, picked up on the synergy of this and, in fact, um, started to co-opt girl power as a kind of personal style and a spice girl's attitude. So, so that girl with an angry three R's transmogrified um, almost overnight, it seemed, into a um, girly girl with a playful wink. So we went through the 90s, turned the century with Sex in the City, um, caught steam with gossip girls and reality shows and Bratz dolls looking to wear something strappy, and uh, <laughs> here we are. Um, so, um, when you look at uh, a character like Katniss Everdeen in The Hunger Games, her rebellion now, it can be bought um, as a, a rebel, so sort of her rebellion is now sort of a rebel moisturizer that girls can, <laughs> girls can buy to express their inner warrior. Um, and they can buy um, lipstick that looked like hers or um, China glaze nail polish so, because, you know, a girl's going to want to look good when she um, fights her oppressive government. <laughs> so girls are invited in ad after ad to choose um, stupid over smart, um, to choose sexy over strong, to choose uh, thinness over health to see kind of sexual um, objectification and self-objectification as sort of a freedom and um, something that's liberatory. Images are photoshopped to the point of absurdity. <laughs> and virtually every little doll that girls play with has been remade. Um, whether it's strawberry shortcake, whether it's My Little Pony, imagine how you do that, um, into kind of um, thin, you know, sort of thin down kind of fashionistas. Um, little girls' natural plumpness, you know, becomes a sign of their personal failure. Nobody but nobody escapes. <laughs> um, so this kind of crazy culture starts to look like um, what Betty Friedan, um, you know, kind of a hot ver version of what Betty Friedan once called um, the problem that has no name. <laughs> um, so like housewives in the 1950s and 60s, girls today are beginning to ask, you know, is, is this all? Um, and of course it's not all, but the kinds of messages that girls are getting do nothing to interrupt um, uh, or um, challenge the inequities or differences that make a difference in their lives, in fact, they exacerbate them. So even race is a commodity. 
Um, magazines like Elle um, lighten the skin of models and actresses of color, um, while um, companies and corporations like Unilever sell um, self-esteem and body diversity in the U.S. with Dove products while they're selling um, Vaseline skin lightening cream to women in India. Um, and uh, as, as in our country where, you know, there's a big a gap between rich and poor that's growing, little girls are told that their worth depends on the brands they can purchase. Um, starting with um, Aldo shoes and mud jeans in their doll sets. So how do we empower girls when girl power has been so thoroughly co-opted by the media? At Hardy Girls Healthy Women, my um, uh, nonprofit um, in Waterville, we have a recipe for moving girls from this kind of image of a girl empowered to a girl who has real power. And it goes something like this. Step one, bring a collection, a diverse collection of girls together. Um, Media will tell us that they will fight, there'll be cat fights, that they will backstab one another, that they'll devolve into drama. But in reality, they work together. They find common goals. They do amazing things. Step two, help adults get beyond this need to fix girls and to actually be muses for them inspire the best in them, help them see the difference between um, protecting girls from problems and um, actually inviting their creative ideas and solutions. Step three, ask genuine questions that reveal contradictions. Um, move girls to really think about the problems in their lives critically. Critical thinking is the per first step to personal transformation. And personal transformation is essential to political activism. Step four, when they start to identify issues that they want to change, scaffold their work, scaffold their activism, give them the tools and the training and the information they need in Audre Lorde's terms to transform silence to language and action. And then step five, get out of the way because they're going to do some amazing things. Girls begin to experience themselves differently. As uh, Izzy says, before I realized, okay, <laughs> I was a feminist, I just thought I was a narcissist because I really liked myself. <laughs> Girls begin to critique the crazy culture they're in. As one girl on our Powered by Girl Facebook page said, um, the number one reason a girl needs a waist bigger than her head circumference. <laughs> Girls begin to use their knowledge um, and their experience to, to create new things. So Aaliyah, um, an eating disorder survivor, um, sitting in her uh, science lab, watching her professor walk back and forth in front of a projector screen, came up with an idea to um, really uh, listen to other survivors and to educate people. She invited stories of survivors um, anonymously to, you know, sort of contribute anonymously and then invited her friends and allies to come to a photo shoot and stand um, in white t-shirts and have those stories projected onto them. Here's an example. Imagine a room full of such secrets and such stories, what that can mean to girls who are struggling with an eating disorder. And Hardy Girls has worked with um, Aaliyah to develop this as a free downloadable activity so girls anywhere can do this activity. And girls become innovators. At, at Hardy Girls, our Girls Advisory Board really wanted to um, find a way to uh, talk with other girls and critique media messages online. So they worked together over a series of months and came up with the idea of Powered by Girl, which is an online um, media activism site with a teen blog. Um, so lots of girls around the country are blogging. And a really creative application that allows girls to satirize and spoof sexist media. So in, in this Candy's ad, uh, one girl has spoofed this, or pvg it as we call it. Um, I am more than eye candy, why can't candy treat, treat me this way? 
And in this Zappos ad on the left is the original ad, More Than Shoes, and a girl has spoofed it or PBG'd it as uh, more than degrading. So girls, once they really learn this critical, critical vocabulary and get involved, they want to do something bigger than themselves. They want to do social change work. Change work. So my friend Deborah Tolman and I started a movement called SPARK, which stands for Sexualization, Protest, Action, Resistance, Knowledge, which is an online and on the ground um, activism site for girls to challenge sexualization in media. And we brought together girls from all around the country to blog and do actions. So when Lego, um, this is an original 1980s le um, ad for Lego, went from this to this, um, recently, um, some of the girls had kind of a problem with that. Um, and they put up a petition, Stephanie and Bailey put a petition up on change.org. They got over 50,000 signatures and a meeting with Lego, and you can bet they were there representing. <laughs> And just up the road in Waterville, um, Julia, who's a veteran um, Spark blogger at Just 14, um, wrote her own petition um, to the magazine that she loved the most, Seventeen. She asked Seventeen to, um, to just you have one non-Photoshop spread in each issue. And that petition also took off. And as it was taking off, Julia and some of her Spark teammates traveled to New York and staged a mock photo shoot outside of Seventeen Magazine headquarters, um, where Julia delivered her 25,000 um, petition signatures. Now that petition has, is, has over 72,000 signatures, and girls all over the country are involved in this action, including Powered by Girl, who spoofed um, this month's Seventeen Magazine in support of Julia. So on the left, you have the hair issue, with 25, uh, 250 easy hair ideas. And on the right, you have um, the, rev the revolution issue with 250 organizing ideas. So a little bit about what girls might um, want from their magazines. This is activism girl style now. This is a public show of girls' social and political intelligence. It, it is a sign of their courage and their involvement in, in creating the culture that they want to see. Girls are getting a little growly again, and I'm thinking this is a good idea. <laughs> um, activism is breaking out all over, and it looks a little different. This time, it's intergenerational. This time, it's across difference. This time, girls are looking at um, their media and looking at the sort of homophobia and the sexism and the racism and the classism that underpin it. This time, they're looking at um, the padded bras for toddlers and um, the pole dancing uh, exercise tapes for tweens, and they're connecting it to a billion-dollar sex industry. So I invite you, the next time you're in the presence of a girl, to forego the uh, compliments about her appearance and to really engage her in a conversation. Ask her what she thinks. Ask her um, what she cares about. And then connect her to other girls. Connect her to organizations and movements that can amplify her voice. Girls now are beginning to take back the culture. They're beginning to imagine the world as if it could be otherwise. Please join them.